they're not even hiding it anymore. The Republican Party in Montana has just banned Zoe Zephyr from the rest of the legislative session. She will still be able to vote from home, but she will not be able to speak on any bills on the House floor. Essentially denying her pretty much, her, and her constituency, the representation that they democratically elected. All because she stated that they will have blood on their hands for voting against trans health care and trans rights. Because they're fascists, and they don't give a shit. Today, the Republican Party, in not only Montana, but in the United States, continues to show just how far to the right that they have come, and that they're not going back. Because they're whole shtick, their whole reason for being, their whole ideology is power and control and maintaining that power and control by whatever means are necessary. What's also very bourgeois democracy of them is that they're doing this in the same way that the Nazis did in the Weimar Republic before you know, the establishment of the Third Reich. It's the same thing. They are being voted in, and they are systematically chipping away at different minorities' rights. And right now, that minority's rights is largely trans people, but the LGBT community as a whole. Because somehow we are a threat to them. It's in the same vein that, you know, that, that it was for the Jews during that time. Like, yeah, even the Muslims didn't even get it this bad during the era between, you know, the 2000s and, you know, what, about the 2015 or so? When it kind of, when, when all of a sudden being Muslim didn't really matter as much anymore. I mean, it still matters to some people, but for the large amount, it's now largely a uh, thing against trans people and against gay people. That does not mean, of course, that the Islamophobia has stopped. There's still plenty of Islamophobia. It's just the difference between American fascists and fascist fascists like the Nazis is that instead of the Jews, it's Muslims, and instead of, you know, and you know, but it's the same rhetoric, homosexuals, transgender, doesn't matter. You're still a persecuted minority. Now, that does not mean that there aren't still some fascists, some Nazis in America, some white supremacists that also are anti-Semitic, because there's still plenty of those even within the Republican Party, but for the most part now, it's, you know, largely goes hand in hand. Because American fascism is very much intertwined with Zionism. But I digress. The situation that has happened in Montana is also echoing in other states. Just this morning, a state senator in Nebraska is being put under investigation for speaking out against these anti-trans bills in her state. Let's also keep in mind that this senator is bisexual. They're not trans, but they are bisexual. And that she's under investigation for speaking out against you know, these anti-trans bills, for standing up for the LGBT community, for standing up for the trans community. 
they're not hiding it. They're not definitely not hiding it anymore. January 6th was not the culmination. It was a coronation of sorts. It was the beginning of a long-standing campaign by the fascist right in America to seize control. And they're succeeding. And we, as revolutionaries, not even just as revolutionaries, we as a community, gay community, trans community, any, you know, if you call yourself an anti-fascist and you call yourself an ally for gay and trans people, there's no sitting on your ass anymore. There is no more, you know, you know, well, you know, it's going to get better. Just keep voting for this person. No, that time is over because this right here is proving how the bourgeois democracy does not work and how the fascists will use it and manipulate it to their advantage until they have, they have essentially seized the power. Once they do, that bourgeois democracy is over. Bourgeois democracy only continues to exist so long as the mechanisms that drive it continue to be well greased, well oiled, and continue to play out in its favor. You know, essentially capitalism in its normal mode of, of you know, of function. But when capitalism and the status quo and social issues begin to challenge that status quo, the bourgeoisie will resort to more and more draconian and totalitarian measures to ensure they remain in power and in control. And that is the nature of bourgeois democracy. That is its end game. Just like how with capitalism, its end game is fascism. Fascism is capitalism in decay. And it's also bourgeois democracy in decay. And bourgeois democracy only decays when capitalism decays. And that is what's happening right now in the United States. It's happening in Britain, it's happening in a few other countries, but it, this is what is happening right now, right this minute, in the United States. And we need to stop it now. Because for all of you who are saying, oh, well, it can't get any worse, it can't get any worse, just keep... But no, it will get worse. Mark my words, I have been saying this over and over and over again since I've come back to YouTube. I've been saying this over and over and over since I even started YouTube ten years ago. Well, more than that almost 12 years ago and I've been proven right time and time and time again we stand on the precipice right now between losing it all and being herded like cattle into the camps an all out revolution and I for one would choose to die a martyr than to die a coward in chains. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Until next time.